how did you and Papoose even meet? How did this all come about? And what made you want to be a manager? Papoose and I met when I was working with uh, another underground artist who I went to college with at Towson University named Brahms, who's not an artist anymore. Um, but we were living in Philadelphia at the time. And we had this record and we wanted a New York MC to feature on it. Mm. So friends of mine were like, I know Papoose. I can get you in touch with him, but he's going to want to get paid to do mm -hmm. the verse. And this is in 2010. So Pap came to Philadelphia. We, we negotiated a deal, took every last penny that we had <laughs> saved up for him to do a feature. <laughs> and he came down. And when he came down and did the verse, when he was leaving the studio, I stopped him because he was, my, he was one of my favorite MCs. And I'm like, why'd you never put out your Nasarima Dream album? with Jive Records, why didn't you do it? And we started going back and forth and he was giving me the story. And I said, listen, man, let me manage you. And it was my first time. Wow. It was my first time saying out loud, like I could do something for you. I could help you get your project out. And I really didn't even know how, but I, I, I knew I had to kind of like step off that cliff. And um, he didn't say yes, but he gave me his phone number and I harassed him for six months. And I started pitching him like, why don't we try this? Why don't we try this? Let's, let, let's release a song this way. And I started investigating into independent distribution. And at the time, yeah. Ingrus Fontana, I'm like, I said, F the major labels, Pap, you don't need them anymore. Let's distribute independently. You'll get a lion's share of uh, the income and we'll own the records. This is going back to 2011. So it wasn't even cool to put out your album independently. And finally, he's like, okay, cool. If you can get me a deal with them, I'll allow you to manage me and we'll start this. This is after six months of harassing him via text message. <laughs> so I felt like a creep, but, <laughs> but I was convinced that, that this was the right thing to do. Elevator version is he allowed me to start managing him. We ended up getting his debut album out. We turned a, a $20,000 production advance from a distribution company into hundreds of thousands of dollars. Amazing. Um, we sold a lot of records for his debut project. We released it independently. He kept ownership Ooh. of it. Um, and that started a, a long history of pushing independence and him and I starting to build a professional working relationship. So that's how I started working with Papoose. What was it that was driving you to be so big on independence and just ownership, right? Because, you know, early on, you didn't have to. You could have just been like everybody else and just focusing on trying to get a deal from the regular corporation. Right. But I feel like this through line is something that we see throughout your entire career. Yeah. Ownership, independence. Yes. How did you know? Like, because thinking about this time period, I mean, now people are talking about right. that, right? right? But at that time... What made you even realize, okay, this is the key. This is how we really do things. In my head back then, the thought was a couple of things. It was, why is it so important for the major labels to own everything? Mm. If they're making so much money, right. then maybe we should function more like a major label and be focused on owning what the music we put out. That was thought one. Okay. Thought two was... In order to get a major label deal, it's almost like you had to have huge success already or they weren't interested in working with you. So Papoose was in this weird intersection where he was a known artist. Right. But at the time that I started working with him, he wasn't the hottest artist on the block. So they weren't going to give us an advantageous deal. Yeah. So my thought process was, well, if the major labels are so hyper-focused on owning all the music that they give deals to the artists for, then why shouldn't we want to own our own music? Right. And once I understood that the splits heavily favor the artist when you distribute instead of doing a traditional record deal, it was a no-brainer to me. Pap, you already have the fans. Right. You already had a major label, massive deal. You've had big records and features. There are fans out there. If we're going to get 80% of the income that, that comes in from an independent distributor, why wouldn't we want to get 80% instead of a 16-point artist royalty like the major labels are offering? Right. You want to get 16 cents every dollar or do you want to get 80 cents every dollar? Right. That was the thought process. And 
like I said, secondary to that was it's simple. Unless you were uh, a superstar or um, the hottest new up and coming artist, the major labels didn't give a about you. Right. So I, I didn't want to waste time following up on our, our conversation earlier, like pitching people. That's a waste of time. Right. Build a business, start somewhere. Maybe you make a thousand bucks this month, but in a year, maybe you're making 10,000. Right. In five years, you're making 50,000. I mean, like, it takes time to build something valuable. And I was never scared of putting in the time. And I did my best to uh, convince and show the artists and partners I had that there is a, a fruitful path if you're willing to put in time and make some sacrifices today and not get this flashy advance, which is really just a glorified bank loan anyways. That's it. Like you could build a business that they can't take away from you. Mm -hmm. And I kept seeing that too. That kind of, you know, detoured me from wanting uh, to get major label deals with anybody I worked with was, okay, great. It could be good for today. And then the second you're not popular anymore, they also have control to shelve you and throw you to the side. Yep. And they do it. And they, they do it. All the time. That's the norm. And so just observing, watching, you know, some of my favorites go through some of that struggle made me say to the people that I worked with, why would we even put ourselves in that position? Mm -hmm. Let's control our own narrative, control our own business. And at least if we fail, we either own the fail or we're going to own the majority of the win. And that was how I, I, you know, I started focusing on the ownership element mm -hmm. of the entertainment industry overall.